Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's me again, it's Jay. And this week I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I've spoken about the Wrath and Rapture set. And last week I've said about what I would do to expand on it. So I thought to myself, well, if I'm going to give out that type of idea, perhaps I should build a, a list just to give more examples. So today now I've worked out a, a list. I'm going to throw it out to you guys so you can have your say on it. Don't get me wrong, it's nothing special. It's a thousand point vanguard list. It's going to be based on corn and it might be rubbish. So I want your comments. Comment down below and share it with your friends. Right then guys, to start this list, I've grabbed myself a brew. As is the British tradition. So, a nice strong brew kicks off everything. But for the army, I have got a Bloodmaster, which is a Herald of Corn. Karnak, obviously, because with a sexy model like that, why wouldn't you uh, put him out on the board? Two units of Blood Letters, and they're two units of ten. One unit of Flesh Hounds, because, again... Why wouldn't you feel sexy models? One skull cannon. And two units of three blood crushers. That's just going to be your base, out of your basic uh, 1000 list. That came to 960. Now I'm going to have to explain why I went down this route. Which is quite simply. That is Wrath and Rapture and the Star Collecting Box. And one herald. So I haven't broken the bank on this list. And I think that's not a bad start. Three un three battle line units, two cavalry units, and I got two generals. Well, I say I got HQs, the Blood Masters, my general. But if we have a look at the war scrolls, here we have the Blood Master. Now, this is just your basic list. This is no artifacts. So, as we can see, movement 5, strength 4, wounds 5, bravery 10. That's a nice, meaty herald for you to learn to play Age of Sigmar with. But don't take my word for it. Let's have a look at his weapon and his abilities. Which is on your screen now. The Blade of Blood. Range 1. 4 attacks. 3 plus to hit. 3 plus to wound. Minus 1 rend. And 1 damage. Now that's a nice basic weapon. And I know you can go on from this. But it's his abilities I'm more interested in. Like decapitating blow. If the roll of the Blade of Blood is 6 or more. The blow inflicts a mortal wound instead of its normal damage. Which, you're going to be hitting a lot on a, on a 3+. plus, But to get that extra little buff for the 6, if you're lucky, I like that. But on top of that is the next one. And this is the ability that got me interested in the Herald. And it's called the Blood Must Flow. After a Blood Master attacks in the combat phase... You can pick another Bloodletter unit within 8 inches. That unit can immediately pile in an attack as if it's within 3 inches of the enemy. if it And has not already attacked this phase. So if you charge your Herald in and he's doing well. If you're keeping the pack tight... Which you probably would because he's a bu he's a he's a bubble and he's gonna hand out extras to his team. You can pull in extra units. Key word be in blood letter. And it's more than just the blood letter units that can be taken for this. Your skull cannon has the key word blood letter in it. So effectively if you've charged him with everyone 
and you just need that extra couple of attacks, there is no harm in pulling in your skull cannon. And you can with the keyword blood letter. So he is worth keeping in the middle of your units and just pulling them up in one block. Your skull cannon is going to be your artillery piece because he's going to be shooting, giving you some cover fire to get you up the board. But then you can pull him in and attack. And I'm going to pull up the uh, skull cannon next so we can see how good it is. But I think that's better than the uh, the herald on the throne. Because you've given yourself an extra phase. So let's get the war scroll up and I'll show you what I mean. So let's start at the top. Skull cannon, movement 8, 4 plus save, 7 wounds, bravery 10. So it's not like this is going to outrun your herald. If you can keep this just behind a little bit, he's doing cover fire. So, again, he's going to be a nice little centerpiece unit. But the weapons are nice. So let's scroll down. So we got the Burning Skull, which is a missile attack. So you've got a shooting phase. Corn doesn't have a lot of shooting, so get it while you can. Range 30, one attack, three plus to hit and to wound, a minus two rend, and a d6 damage. So even though it's one attack, you're doing damage. And you could... Do a lot damage. We've already gone over the Hellblades. But we've also got the gnashing maw of the Skull Cannon. So when this gets into close combat. It's got a 1 inch range. 1 attack. 4 plus to hit. 3 plus to wound. A minus 1 rend. And a D3 on the damage chart. So it's harder to hit. Granted. There is other buffs you can do to help you, but you're still hitting. It's it's not impossible. It's not it's not like it's a. You're trying to shoot someone behind you. You you're gonna hurt the you're gonna hurt them. So. We're gonna have a look at the abilities now. And. Perhaps, I'm wrong in thinking that this is a good good unit. You can tell me below. Again, I'm always open to other people's comments. If you can make a, make a good list for the Vanguard, let's hear it. So, let's have a look at the abilities. So, let's have a quick look at the abilities before I start going overboard. We already know Decapitate and Blow because there's Hellblades involved. So let's start at the top. Skull Cannon. When a Skull Cannon shoots its burning skull, add one to the hit roll if the target contains ten or more models. So, the Skull Cannon is going to enjoy Horde Armies because he's going to hit. Two plus to it, that's, that's going to make your life easier. Perhaps when you start going up to the Battle Horse and higher... You may want a few more of these, but a thousand points, you're not going to get a lot of spa uh, spammy units. You're not going to get much over 10 models, so make the most of it. So if you hit in a unit of 10 and you're rolling D6, you're going to do some damage to that unit. And then next up, we've got Grind Their Bones. Enemies seized by the Skull Cannon's Moors are used to power the Infernal Machine. The skulls are taken and used as fiery munitions. If the skull cannon's gnashing more causes any wounds in the combat phase, at the end of, end of that phase, you can make a burning skull attack as though you were in the shooting phase. That, coupled with the herald, I think is a nice combo. Because if he drags you in and you attack, and say you, you've, like it says, You've caused damage. You've taken out 
a model or two from that unit, you get an extra shooting attack. Granted, if it's a 10 model, 10 model unit and the Herald's attacked and the and you've been lucky enough with the uh, Skull Cannon, you're not getting the buff for the the, to, the hit, but three, 3 plus, close range, and you're doing D6 damage. Again, a nice combination. It's a nice meaty unit as well because of the 7 wounds, but don't be afraid to experiment. Again, what are your thoughts on this? Let me know below. And perhaps we can make a list together. Now I don't want you thinking, Jay, all you've done is the Herald and the Skull Cannon. That isn't your army. True. So let's get on to the runners of the uh, of the pack, which is your Blood Crushers. I've opted for two units of three instead of going for one unit of six because I like to have more units on the board. Granted, there's a lot of small units, but if you're lucky enough to have a lot of terrain on the board, you can weave in and out. So, movement 8, 4 plus save, bravery 10, 4 wounds. They're not exactly a fast runner. They move in the same as the Skull Cannon and the Herald. So, you're moving up like a block, but this is a bloodthirsty, hard-hitting block. So... Next, we'll go at the weapons. So, we've got the weapons here now. We all know what Hellblade does. So, let's get on to the Jugger's Brazen Hooves. One inch range, three attacks. Three plus to hit and to wound, no rend, damage one. So, you're going to be hitting a lot when they get in. And, they can, and three attacks... I would say on average you're going to get at least two. But on a three plus, it's, it's hard to miss. I'm not going to say you're not going to miss. It's hard to miss. But then, let's just, let's, up, let's upgrade our juggers then, is it? So, the leader is going to be a blood hunter. And let me get the information up now. The blood hunter. Lead, leader of this unit is the blood hunter. Makes two attacks with his Hellblade instead of one. That's, you know, a nice little buff. You've got your Icon Bearer. Um, Battleshock test for Icon Bearer with the Icon Bearer for a one. You can add one model to that unit. Does get better for others, but we'll go on to that later. Your Hornblower, he makes your opponent reroll Battleshock tests of one. If they're within six inches. So he plays really badly for them. So, you know, everyone wants to run away when someone's playing the instrument bad. So it's a nice little runny unit. It's going to hit like bricks. And it's going to hit like bricks for the abilities. So let's have a look at the abilities. We got Decapitating Blow. Bread and Butter of the Army. On a six, you inflict a mortal wound instead of normal damage. We then got Murderous Charge, which is a unit completes the charge move. Then at the end of the charge phase, roll a D3 for each enemy unit within one inch. On a roll of four or more, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. If the unit includes six or more models, the target unit suffers D6 mortal wounds instead. So if your army's being closed in on, they smell blood, it's working in your favour. Don't call in the Skull Cannon. You call in your Jugger units. Grant is only going to be one. It's situational, I know. But the, well, the D6 Mortal Wounds. It's a nice little, uh, it's a nice little ability that is you're able to exploit. And then on top of that, we got the Locust of Wrath. Reroll any failed to hit rolls for this unit if it is charged. And there is a Demon Hero of Corn with from your army within 8 inch. So again, bubble is the key. You, they're just going to buff each other. So 
if he's dragging that unit in, you're definitely within eight inches. So they're going to hit. And it's that four plus, you can always do without a reroll. So it's a nice little synergy between the Herald, the Skull Cannon, the Crushers, all the other bits of the army. Granted, I'm not talking about Karnak and his Flesh Hounds, because I talked about them two weeks ago in a pre-order video. But they're off going to hunt another hero. This is going to take out the Chaff. And you've got your elite hunters running around somewhere else on the pitch. So, again, I can't speak more highly of the units for Corn. I think Corn is a nice, simple... Uh, army to get the grips with when it comes to AOS I might be wrong again I've said it before I will say it again I'll say it next week probably as well tell me below right guys we've talked about your elites your artillery your hero let's talk about your little foot soldiers so foot soldiers for the corn army is going to be your blood letters Movement 5, so they're a bit slower than your Herald and your Juggers. But we can make it work. Wounds 1, 5 plus save, 10 bravery. Weapon, Hellblade. We all know what the Hellblade does. So, let's have a look at the company uh, command and we'll start looking at abilities. So again, same as the uh, Crushers, we've got a Blood Hunter, which is having two attacks instead of one. We've got an Icon Bearer, and he's got a choice of two Icons. And we've got a Home Blower, another one that likes to play his flute a little badly. I'm not going to go over them again. Again, it's always worth having, because it's those little buffs, and they always add up. And especially if you can make two attacks with your Hellblade. That's a nice little touch. But, again, you got two units of these. And they 10-man units. They're going to get up the board. And they want to hit something. So, let's have a look at the abilities. And see how they're going to hit them. So, here we go. Let's have a look at some abilities. we got Decapitating Blow. Same as everyone else. But now we got the Blood Soak Banner and the Gore Drenched Icon. Gore Drenched Icon, um, on a Battle Shock test of one, you add D6 models to that unit. That's a nice little uh, buff. Again, if you were starting this army out, because you've just picked up Wrath and Rapture and you picked up your Star Collecting Box and you've picked up Herald, you may not want to go down that route, but if you're looking to... Again, if you're going to look up to Battle Host, you may want to expand on that road. Or even if you just had a few sets, you could just keep going. You can keep buffing your army. But the Blood Soak Banner is each time a unit containing a Blood Soak Banner slays a hero, add one to any charge rolls you make for it the rest of the battle. So you more you're killing, the more you're hitting. It's like it's a like a unleashing Wolverine's Berserker mode. I think if I was starting out, I'd probably go for the banner. But once I had a few models under my belt, I will go for the gold drenched icon. So that's not the end of it. Let's have a look at the rest of the abilities. And all we've got left now is the Locust of Fury and the Murderous Tide. We know what the Locust of Fury does. It's re-rolls of one if there's a hero next to you. If you're moving this up on the block, it's going to be a herald with you. Isn't it? He's going to be a hero. So you're going to be re-rolling. So it's nice to keep a bubble around you. I know I've said bubble a few times. If you drink into this video, I'm sorry for your liver. The other thing, thing is, if when I say, comment below, comment below. I don't know where that comes from. Let me carry on. Getting off track. Murderous Tide. Blood letters attacking en masse are terrifying prospects. Swarming forward to eviscerate foes with their Hellblade. 
you can add one to hit rows made for blood letters if it contains 20 or more models. So you're not going to get the benefit in the Vanguard. But, like I've said all the way through the video, battle host or more, you may want to beef out the, the unit. So if you're lucky enough to get your 20, 20 guys in, you're going to get advantage from murderous tides. And if you uh got a few few units of these, it's gonna be a scary prospect to look across the table. So that's it. That's basically my thousand points. I enjoyed making this list. It seemed really fun. So I'm thinking come December when Wrath and Rapture's out, I might start a corn army for the channel that is comprise of this as a, at a thousand points so tell me what you think if you think it's a bad list let me know if you think uh your list is better tell us what it is we can have a look at it on the weeks to come and see if we can build and we can build a channel army which hopefully in future i will do painting guides I'll do bat reps with the army and then hopefully I can do one with the slanesh side. But it's all down to you guys. You've got to tell me what you want for content. So I'm leaving this up to you. Please comment, like, subscribe. And I'll see you in future videos. My little end is right here with me. Do you want to say hello? Let's say hello then. Hello. Can you tell them um, see you next time? See you next time. Bye. Bye. Right, guys, it's the end of the show, which only means one part. It's the shilling. Um, we've got PayPal and Patreon. Um, there's not a lot of tiers at the moment. That will be expanded upon. So, in advance, thank you from the bottom of my heart. We are looking to expand the channel. It's going to be more than just me talking about subjects. We're hoping that we can get Blood Bowl bat reps. Um, we want to get Age of Sigma bat reps. But I can't do this alone. I need you guys. So that's why these are set up. So please and thank you in advance. And comment, like, subscribe. And let your friends know. Because I'm not doing this channel for myself. I'm doing it for you guys. So let's build a community. Let's get more people involved. Let's get you know other voices heard. So let's get out there. See you on Sunday, guys. So long.